All right, so I just got everything in to test the setup and the total damage is about $540 before tax. So it's gonna be a fairly low entry point into what is a mini ITX DDR5 Alder Lake setup. So let's just take a quick look and see how everything works here. Welcome to Machines and More. I'm pretty stoked about this kit here. Uh, we've got the Asus B660 ITX and the i5-12400F and one of the cheapest, most uh, basic RAM kits that I could find here. This is 16 gig DDR5 Patriot kit. Full review on the board and the CPU coming soon, but I wanted to give you guys a quick preview here. All right, so this Asus board is gonna be one of your few B660 mini ITX options. It is DDR5 only. And that might not really make sense uh, to, you know, on a budget board right now, but it is it is what it is, right? And that might be an impediment or a downside to some, but you know, it's not a showstopper and you can either just ease into DDR5 later on by getting a DDR4 uh, Z690 board right now. But, uh, you know, you can also just bite the bullet and rip that Band-Aid off. Uh, this RAM kit here, it's really basic. <laughs> You're like, there's no heat spreaders. And it's, it's really just the ICs on one side, about 150 bucks for this kit, 4,800 megahertz CL40. The bandwidth for this isn't too bad, but the latency just based on those two figures, it's gonna be pretty high. And in fact, it's gonna be a lot worse than say your typical DDR4 3200 megahertz C16 kit, but that is just how things are right now with DDR5. And I do plan on reviewing the board with at least a little bit better of a RAM kit and we'll see uh, what we uh, get here in the next couple weeks. But it's equally important, I think, to at least take a look and, and see what this basic DDR5 kit, given that the CPU and the board are targeted more as value oriented options. So, you know, in some sense, it doesn't really make sense uh, to spend 400 bucks for a RAM kit just to throw on uh, this board and CPU, which, you know, gonna be less than that RAM kit. But, uh, you know, this board, I actually really like the layout already because it's so much better than the Z690 Gigabyte that we already took a look at. The clearance is here, way better. I mean, this rear IO shroud is still really big. The M.2 heatsink, it's low, which is great. The other M.2 is on the back, I love it. Both of these are PCIe Gen 4. The board also has legacy cutouts for your previous gen Intel cooler mounting. So, you know, your LGA 11.5X, LGA 1200 mount, but it also has the LGA 1700. And uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and mount my U9S with the LGA 1700 because I, I have that, but uh, we'll, we'll test out how that differs later on. So yeah, let's take a quick look. I'm just gonna kick off Cinebench real quick here. And uh, yeah, everything is set up here. It did take a little bit longer than I expected to post, it, probably like a minute or so, and I didn't actually think it was gonna work, but it did. So maybe that's just a quirk for the first time post. And, but yeah, overall, the board, I, I really like it. No weird layout issues, no we weird quirks. The M.2 works fine. And uh, yeah, I've got the U9S on here. It, the chip does come with a stock cooler. And this one's actually one of the nicest Intel stock coolers that I've seen. You know, it kind of has a nice shroud and uh, matte black heat sink. All right, so about 70, 72 watts on the package power here during the Cinebench run. And uh, on all cores, it's hitting about 4,000 megahertz max. All right, so that wrapped up 11,000. It's not terrible, but it's still a little bit shy of what a stock 5600X will get you. And in fact, it's lower than the 12.7, uh, the 10700K. Let's try the single core. We'll kick that off and uh, see how that does. All right, so the single core test wrapped up 1579. It's not too shabby. About in line with, uh, you know, good uh, Ryzen 5000 chip. But uh, the max it got on a single core from uh, according to the Harbor monitor is about 4,400 is what I saw. So let's, uh, let's boot into a game and see how we're doing in terms of the FPS. All right, I got the Far Cry 6 in-game benchmark kicked off here. Um, 3080, this is uh, 1080 high just to put the onus on the CPU. But uh, that's not looking too bad. Uh, just for reference, the 12600K was doing, I, I, if I recall correctly, 118 
FPS average for the same test. And right now it's looking like somewhere around 110 and uh, 1% low is about 82 right now. So uh, this is, uh, it's competitive. Uh, the 5800X came in about 117, so it was virtually identical to the 12600K for this test. But uh, for one, for bone stock, uh, that this is not this is not too bad at all. 108, 107. Yeah, it looks like 10, 107. So yeah, not too bad. So let's go into BIOS real quick. All right, I don't know how many of you have seen Durbauer's uh, video on uh, overclocking the non-K chips here, like the 10400F we have here. Um, I don't see the option to raise the the base clock. And unfortunately that means for the uh, 12400F on the B660 ITX ASUS board, it doesn't look like you can overclock it that way. But that doesn't mean we can't go and uh, tune our memory a little bit. So let's see what we can do in BIOS and see if that gives us a little bit of an uplift in at least the gaming benchmark we checked out just now. On the ASUS Enhanced Memory Profile, it'll give you two different options, a 4800 frequency, 32, 32, 32, or 5600, 38, 38, 38. It requires a little more, more voltage. We're gonna go with this one. The latency is the same between 4800 at 32 and 5600 at 38 but we're gonna we'll, we'll try and see if this improves our uh, far cry 6 bench all right i've been running this benchmark a few times uh, after enabling the xmp profile and actually the frame uh, fps got worse both for the uh, frame time consistency and also the average frame. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. Of course, I did reset everything just to double check and you saw the numbers, right? Uh, it came down to much worse than before. It was averaging what, 107 before. So that came down to like 95, which is really odd. But I'm actually not terribly, uh, I'm not surprised here with uh, Far Cry 6, it's not very well optimized. So. There's uh, a few things that could be happening here. So I'm obviously gonna uh, d d investigate a little more, but at least with Civ 6, I ran another game just to double check there. With the XMP off, it was about 139 frames per second and uh, with XMP on, 143. So I think there is value in enabling the XMP profile. It really just improves the latency and the timings, uh, the, the clock speed is still 4800 megahertz on this kit, even if you put it on auto. Uh, so far, not too bad. The combo looks fairly decent. The RAM isn't terrible. And uh, yeah, it does look kind of bare without the heat spreaders, but at 1.1 volts and even up to 1.25 volts, I'm sure it's absolutely fine. Uh, one thing is I was hopeful there would be a way to change the base clock on this board and the 12400, but it doesn't actually look at like there's a way to do that. Uh, perhaps this board doesn't have an external clock generator or maybe the option is just blocked out by ASUS uh, for the time being, I don't know. Um, at the same time, I don't know that there's gonna be too many folks getting this CPU to do exclusively that. So um, at least you can fine tune the, the RAM here. But uh, just at a glance so far, performance is looking at best on par with the stock 5600X but uh, obviously without the ability to fine tune it past the memory OC. Cost-wise, this combo with this cheap DDR5, uh, cheap is relative, right? But uh, with the cheap DDR5 is relatively competitive against a similar mini ITX 5600X B550 combo with DDR4, uh, but as DDR5 improves, Potentially you have a lot more options with this setup uh, versus the DDR4 combo. For Intel 12th, at least uh, for mini ITX, there aren't really a whole bunch of good options for DDR4 motherboards available. Of course, we will revisit that Gigabyte Z690 Ultra soon, so, but I'll keep messing around with this uh, and yeah, expect a more in-depth review soon. Links are down below for this stuff here. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.